Let's go out to Denver, Colorado, and talk to Joe. What's up, Joe? Hey, Dr. Delaney. First time uh, caller. I'm glad to, and honored to talk to you today. Dude, I'm honored that you called, man. What's up? So um, my question is, and I can explain the backstory. Am I crazy for thinking that my wife can use her anxiety disorder as a weapon against me? <laughs> as somebody who was once diagnosed with an anxiety disorder, no, they make extraordinary weapons. <laughs> like, give me, give me your, give me your, uh, your backstory. Okay. So I've been married a little over a year and, um, I didn't know about my wife's, um, anxiety disorder. Um, the first time we were together, we were together about a year and a half. We split up and then COVID happened and we got back together a year later. We got engaged a year later, we got married and here we are. Um, I didn't know about my wife's anxiety disorder the first time we went out. And, um, before she was with me, um, she was with a person who was very verbally abusive that brought out her anxiety as from her childhood that got worse and worse. Um, ever since we got engaged into married, it comes out a little more and more, the longer that we're together. Um, and it, it shows in weird ways. Um, right now, my major issue that I have is, uh, my, uh, my wife spends a lot of money on mobile applications, um, on her phone that she says helps her anxiety. It's bull crap it on a stick. Her brain. Absolutely bull crap on a stick. Makes it 10 times worse, hundred times worse. Yeah. So when she was with her ex, her common thing would be to drive around the metro area that I live in for an hour to two hours till she was able to calm down and sleep. That was her anxiety coping mechanism. And now it's, it's this, um, it's gotten to a really bad point. Um, so just to give you a parameter, it's been about a thousand dollars in this calendar year, which on games, like on, on phone games. Yes. So like, if you imagine like, um, that's 1000 more dollars uh, than I've ever spent on a mobile game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I'll, I'll look at my credit card statement and I'll just see, I won't name the developer. I don't want to insult them on your show, but I'll just see like constant work, I, like items on here. And I suffer from financial anxiety, uh, having a lack or something like uh, an overdraft causes me to have a visceral reaction because I never had that before I was with my partner. I never overdrafted my checking account. Um, and I, I knew exactly how much money was in my checking account at all times. So being with my, my partner now, she's exactly the opposite. And <laughs> she spends money on this, on that. And it, it's just, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I can't get her to budget. I've tried that route. <laughs> actually, hold on, hold on. Let me, uh, let me hop in here. Let me hop in here. Yeah. Okay. So first and foremost, cancel that credit card immediately today. Okay. Okay. Um, this is going to get out of control in a wild way. And I'd be willing to bet money. I may be wrong, but I'd be willing to bet money. No, no pun intended here. Um, that this is not the only thing she's spending money on. Yeah. There's no possible way. This is the only thing. And this is one of those moments that people find out like it was a thousand bucks. It was $1,800. Suddenly it's 25,000 bucks. And it's, you're talking a couple of years to recover from it. I would cancel that card today. Mm -hmm. This is you stopping the bleeding of somebody you love right in front of you. And they may say, ouch, this hurts. I hate this. Get your hands off me. I'm not going to let you bleed out in front of me. Okay? That's what that move is. All right? Backing out. Listen to me super clear and super careful, okay? All anxiety is is an alarm system for your body, period. It is not a driver of behavior. It doesn't make you do things you don't want to do. It doesn't force you into other behaviors, X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. I'll even go one step further. She chose to remain in that relationship with that guy. And I'm not to undermine abusive relationships, man. I've, I've sat with people forever in, the, in those situations. They're brutal and ugly. That guy didn't, set, didn't make her anxiety worse. 
her body was screaming at her to get out of the situation and she stayed. And it got louder and it got louder and it got louder. And so I don't want to demonize anxiety. I don't want to live in a house without a smoke detector. That's insane, right? What I want to do is begin to ask, what about this life? What about this ecosystem that this body lives in, that this person lives in, your wife or your, your friend or whoever, or you, what is it about this ecosystem that my body keeps telling me we're not safe, we're not safe, we're not safe, we're not safe? Because most people spend all their time trying to shut the alarm off instead of dealing with the fire. Okay? So number two, and any sort of diagnosis is a context, not an excuse. I had, was diagnosed at one point with OCD. I had anxiety, all those things, fine. I still had to show up at work. And I get distracted counting things and I have to check my locks a bunch. Okay, great. That means I got to get up 15 minutes earlier or five minutes earlier or two minutes earlier. That means I have to be really, really particular about how I exercise, how I reach out to friends and community, how I take care of my body, et cetera. And by the way, I, I don't make any laps around my house much anymore. It's gone. So to say like I have to do this because – is completely opposite. In fact, it strengthens it. Number three, here's the gnarly thing about anxiety. In her case, something is setting that trigger off. And I have a feeling I know what it is, and you're not going to like it, but I'll tell you in just a second. It sets that alarm off to which she immediately runs to a numbing, um, a numbing behavior. Well, that's driving around for two hours, listening to sad songs, listening to Olivia Rodriguez and singing and singing. Or it is her sitting in a bathroom with the door locked on video games, on her phone. Whatever it is, it's a numbing behavior. Here's the problem. Her brain won. Her brain sounded an alarm for her to avoid a situation that it is deemed a threat, whether that's loneliness, whether that's a scary romantic partner, whether that's any number of things, financial stress, whatever it is. And when she goes to a numbing behavior, the body goes, ah, we avoided it. And it puts a GPS pin in that move. This one works. Do it louder next time. And so the only way to heal from anxiety, the only way to deal with those alarms is to run directly towards them. That's it. And I don't mean that in some woo-woo fluffy way. I mean directly at them. Like, so in your case, why am I so, why does my body try to get my attention every time there's a dollar missing in my account? The reason I had financial anxiety, if you will, that's not even a diagnostic, but I get stressed out. Money was so contentious. We didn't have any growing up. It was scary. And it also, my dad was a policeman and my community didn't pay him enough to give us groceries. And I remember resenting that, but it was all wound up in that. And so I went and borrowed six figures worth of student loans and cars and houses and all this crap so that I could not be that. And I ended up in a bigger hole than my old man ever was in. And so my body was letting me know, you're not safe, you're not safe, you're not safe, you're not safe. You see what I'm saying? So anxiety is not the bad guy here. This world is. Now, when you say you have anxiety, anxiousness, what often happens when somebody is, their body is responding anxiously, they partner up with another anxious person. And that electricity feeds that electricity, which feeds that electricity. And suddenly you get two radioactive people sharing a bed together. And it's combustible. So are you an anxious guy too? Or a very particular guy? Or a very, I don't want to say OCD in the clinical sense, but a very, everything's got to be in order kind of guy? I'm very analytical, yes. <laughs> <laughs> analytical. What a positive spin. Well done. Um, how long has she struggled with this anxiety? Um, for about five years, which would be about the time she was with the ex. I would be um, willing to bet my car. It's not a nice one that it's been going on way longer than that. Yeah. If she traced it back to when she was a kid. That'd she, be my guess. She was adopted. Okay. She was adopted and she doesn't, her birth mom is not um, there in the head. Um, would probably be the two sheets to the wind would probably be a good way of describing her mother's um, mental acuity. She's not. She's struggling. What about her? Anyway, it, we can go down that road. We don't have to do that right now. Um, I'll give you the line that snapped me out of it. 
Here is a direct quote from my wife. And this is about 12 years ago now. She said in a very quiet, calm manner, I am watching the man I love die. And I can't sit here and watch that. Will you please go talk to somebody? And my numbing behaviors, Joe, were work. My numbing behaviors were um, uh, reading journal articles and creating these big maps of I could figure out how people worked. My numbing things were watching stand-up comedians and like I had notebooks where I was charting out which jokes were funny and how long they took between jokes. It was insane. Everybody's got different numbing things, but my wife sat down and said, I'm watching you die. and I love you too much. And it was that moment that I finally felt somebody loved me so much that they weren't interested in what I was in all this peripheral stuff. They were just watching me drown. Mm -hmm. And it, I burned them every time they reached in to help. So I went and got help. Yeah, and I think that's a lot of it. <laughs> it is. But you trying to solve the alarm systems will not work. They will just reinforce them because her body will tell her, hey, he doesn't see the threat. Let's ring this sucker even louder. He can't hear these things. And every time you go to the periphery and say, hey, you need to stop doing this, she's going to move to another either – her body's going to accept that as rejection, which is a cornerstone of an anxious body is a lack of connection, um, which is weird because you're like, we're married. We're right here. We sleep together. We sleep in the same bed. But her body is saying, not safe, not safe, not safe. And so the path forward here is I'm going to provide a safe place for you and me. And that safe place starts with me telling you, I love you so much. I can't watch you. I can't watch you die. I can't watch you numb your life out. You're worth more than a numbed out life. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Is, that, is that ringing? Is any of this ringing true to your home? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I hope she never dies off of mobile apps and her anxiety. I just. It's not I, that. I, I love her a lot. I know, Joe, but I, it, it's not about the oh, mobile apps. Because I promise you, I promise you, and you know this, you're married to a taser. Yeah. And this is just one of 15 different numbing things. But I'll tell you, it escalates and it moves. And it goes from mobile apps to um, some guy who really thinks she's cute and funny at work. Who sends one funny emoji that she responds to with one funny emoji. It goes to one more drink. It goes to, I'm just going to go to bed early. Mm. And I've just done this for too long. It's not about the mobile apps. It's about watching your wife feel like she has to hide from her own life because she can't handle how intense it is. And it feels like I got to run away from that intensity. And the only way to heal is to run directly into it. Most of us can't do that by ourselves. You got to call a professional and get some help. You got to go see a counselor and say, I'm tired of being this exhausted. My husband told me he loves me so much and he's watching me slowly drain out of my own life. And I want to stop that. I'm going to send you both. I'm going to send you a copy of Building a Non-Anxious Life, and I want you all to go through that book together. I'll give you a roadmap, or at least give you all some questions to ask yourself inside your own home to begin to say, okay, why are these alarms ringing all the time in here? And you, my friend, need to ask those questions too because I think they're ringing off in your life too. You've just chosen to, to try to handle them by being very analytical. I've tried to handle them by ignoring them. Both strategies are pathological to their extremes. But I want you all to read this book together and start looking at each one of these pieces. And if you get to a piece you can't dig into, that's when you call a counselor and say, well, I need some help here. I've got high hopes for your marriage because mine is, is as good as they come. And I had a partner that stuck with me. She kept calling me out and kept saying, I miss you. Where are you? Where are you? And then I went and did the work. Y'all can too. I promise.